Hello and welcome to day 89 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the study I've done today is Evening by John Francis Murphy. Well, here we are, folks. 11 more to go. It's been a long, wild ride, and I don't mind saying quite a lot of work, but uh, hopefully this is uh, all accomplishing uh, its purpose, which is uh, bringing some light uh, and uh, illumination to this toneless movement and uh, reaching people that have an interest in it. And uh, if you're an artist and you're interested in, you know, at least this artist's approach to painting uh, tonally, um, I've tried to provide quite a lot of uh, examples, of course, of what I do. So. Uh, anyway, um, we've covered a lot of John Francis Murphy uh, in this series, and uh, we'll probably have a few more. I, I'm not sure, to be honest, but uh, uh, I think we do. Um, he was, you know, one of the more covered artists in this series, because he's in the Trinity, which is George Ness, John Francis Murphy, and Charles Warren Eaton. Anyway, I've been reading from the book uh, A History of American Tonalism, 1820 to no, 1880 to 1920, excuse me. A uh, big chapter there on John Francis Murphy. Uh, this book was written by David A. Cleveland, who is, you know, an amazing writer. That's all I can say. He's just awesome, you know. And uh, if he ever hears this, I hope he, you know, will get in contact with me. That'd be awesome. Anyway, uh, we were on page 216, and I want to uh, um, give me a sec here, folks. So a lot of this is in specific to uh, p particular paintings. Um, let's go to uh, page 217. Actually, responding to the difficult selling climate of the late. 1890s. Ah, we covered that in a previous post. Um, let's see. By the early years of the new century, Murphy found himself at the epicenter of the toneless movement. After the, de after the death of the founding generation of Ines, Wyatt, Martin, and Whistler, Murphy was certainly the most successful of the living practitioners, with the possible exception of Albert Pinkham Ryder, Dwight Tyron, and Henry Ward Ranger and Charles Harold Davis, all of whom garnered high prices at auction and commanded legions of eager collectors. Tonalism had become the mood of the age. After the influx of Impressionism in the early 1890s, tonalism dominated the market by 1900, thoroughly permeating the consciousness of painters, dealers, and patrons alike. Even the word tone found its way into common parlance, as it does to this day. Murphy, in a letter to his wife in September 1900, described the scenery in terms of tone. The country is beginning to look fine, quite yellowish in tone. In another letter of 1902, Murphy notes the important role of the gilded frame in the overall tonal feel of a painting. I put it in my frame and it comes out fine. It is one of the best ones that I have done. The frame helps so much in giving it tone. And that's the absolute truth, folks. I, I, I should, you know, I've talked a bit about framing in the blog. But uh, you get a good frame on a painting, it really makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah, it really helps you to see it. Murphy writes, I wish I had it. You would like it. Such a fine old tone. A writer, R.G. McIntyre, in an article in the Miscellany in the spring of 1912, described Murphy's works in terms that formed the keystone of his late reputation. Simplicity, economy, brevity, suggestiveness, and charm. His canvases are never crowded, and there is a total absence of laborious detail, as there is a broad, of, of broad splotches of paint. His forms are suggested our imagination being called up, upon to draw them out, and his color is laid on in soft tones, merging gracefully into each other. The writer went on to note the care and lack of hurry in Murphy's work habits. The artist only painted what moved him, and when he was moved, more important, the writer considered Murphy as American through and through. His work, too, is truly American in character. 
there is no reminiscence of the art of other countries or other ages, it, but it is purely personal and, in, and interpreted with all the freshness and wholesome vitality characteristic of the American life today. And if I suggested that we are sometimes reminded of Corot, it is simply the result of a temperamental accident of an almost similar attitude towards the wondrous beauties of nature. Tonalism had become a distinctly national style. And, you know, it's been forgotten, folks. I mean, well, maybe not so much. This book I uh, keep reading from was, you know, voted best art book. Uh, I think it was 98. Oh, no, excuse me, sorry. Probably 2010 or so that it came out. Uh, anyway, uh, we're getting close to the end of the video, I can see, and uh, really like this particular study a lot. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, seeing it painted here. Um, come back tomorrow for day 90 and our countdown uh, to day 100. Um, yes, if you'd like to see some of my own tonalist paintings, go to landscapepainter.co.nz. And meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.